In this lesson, we're going to talk about 3D sketches again, because 3D sketches will be a way for us to get into talking about swept pipes and swept wires for electrical. Let's start out by creating another blank part. Now, if you don't already have a separate 2D and 3D sketch icon on your sketch toolbar, I'll show you how to put those up. Go to your Tools Customize dialog, and then on the Commands tab, go to the Sketch page. If you have the 2D sketch icon with a drop-down symbol next to it, such as this small black arrow, then drag the sketch icon off of your toolbar. And for completeness, I'll also drag my 3D sketch icon off of the sketch toolbar. Just dragging them into white space and releasing will get rid of those toolbar icons. And then from the list of icons on the sketch page, grab the sketch icon and drag it back onto the sketch toolbar. Notice the black bar that shows where it will be placed. And then also get the 3D sketch icon and put it just below the 2D sketch icon. This gives you individual access to 2D sketches and 3D sketches. Having 3D sketch only available behind the 2D sketch icon leads to a lot of confusion. And if you can avoid that, it will be a good thing. So once you've got that all established, just click on OK. To start a 3D sketch, now that you've got the 3D sketch icon on the sketch toolbar, just click on the 3D sketch icon. There are several things on the screen that are showing you that you're working on a 3D sketch. The first is that the 3D sketch icon is depressed. The second, 3D sketch 1 of part 1 shows up in the title bar. Third, the 3D sketch icon is in front of the sketch that's below the rollback bar. And also, your status bar down at the bottom should say Editing 3D Sketch 1. So you should understand at this point that you're in a 3D sketch. We've already talked about some aspects of 3D sketches, and so I'm just going to review a couple of those, but I'm also going to show you some brand new things that are slightly more complex than what we've seen before. You saw before how you can draw straight lines, and I'll just review that. As soon as I click on a line icon, notice I get what's called the space handle shown on the screen. That's these two red axes and the black line that show up. Something that's important to make notice of and make use of is this triad that's down in the lower left-hand corner of the graphics window. It shows you, in general, what the X, Y, and Z directions are all about. And as you rotate the model, that coordinate set icon rolls around with the view. So when I say that we're sketching on the XY plane, you'll understand that it's a plane formed by the X and Y axes. Or if I say that we're sketching a line in the Z direction, you'll understand to look down here and see which way the Z axis is pointing. So I'm going to start sketching, and as usual, I'm going to start sketching from the origin. This is especially true with a new part, but if you're sketching in an existing part, the main idea here is that your sketch be tied down to something. Whether it's tied down to the origin or part of the existing geometry isn't really that important. So by looking at the cursor, the cursor is showing me, with the XY at the bottom of the pencil, that SOLIDWORKS is currently expecting to sketch on the XY plane. When I start sketching from the origin and drag out a line, the yellow dotted lines on the screen show me that SOLIDWORKS is giving me the option of placing the second point of my line anywhere on the XY plane. I could place it here where it gets the along X relation. Notice the yellow symbol to the lower right of the cursor shows that this is along X. So I'll just click on a point along X. If I go straight down, it's showing me I'm along Y now. And if you look at the origin, you'll see that indeed it's in the same direction as the Y axis. Now if I wanted to sketch in the Z direction, I have to press the Tab key 
to allow that space handle to reorient. And now my cursor is talking about the YZ plane. And my automatic relation at this point is along Z. So if I press escape now to get out of the sketch command, or get out of the line command rather, and then rotate the 3D sketch, it's often important to see your sketch from multiple points of view because trying to sketch in 3D while you're on a 2D monitor can be quite deceiving. Another trick that you might try is to go to the window menu and fly out the viewport option and get the four view selection. This allows you to see your sketch from multiple points of view, including from an isometric point of view. So if you continue to draw lines on your 3D sketch, your views in the front, top, and right views will also update. Also, if you start sketching from one of the other views, it will show up in all of the other views. So this is a handy method to use when sketching in 3D. Now I'm going to press escape here and we're going to start applying some sketch fillets. Let's bring the cursor over this corner. And 0 0.05 is a little small, so let's make that 0.25 or maybe even 0.5. Okay, now I can select these corners in any of the views and SolidWorks keeps them updated. If I want to add dimensions, sometimes adding dimensions with sketch fillets can be tricky. Oh, there's one that I forgot. Let's add this one and hit right mouse button to accept. And then the green check to get out of the sketch fillet. Now let's start applying some dimensions. If we want to dimension the length of this line, then one way to do it would be click on the line, even with the fillets on, and place the dimension. SolidWorks is automatically going to dimension to the virtual sharps. So let's make that 2.75. If you want to dimension the distance from this line back to the origin, I recommend using the standard planes. So find which standard plane the dimension is best measured from, such as the right, and with the Smart Dimension tool turned on, click on the right plane and then click on your line. Unlike 2D sketches, in 3D sketches, if you click between multiple points, such as this point and that point, SolidWorks is only ever going to enable you to get a straight line dimension and what is called an aligned dimension. You're not going to get the horizontal or vertical dimension in a 3D sketch. If you want a vertical or a horizontal dimension, you can force SolidWorks to do that kind of thing. And the way you have to do that is to dimension from a plane. So in this case, if I want to dimension from the origin to this point, we're just going to get a straight line dimension, and we can't get that to line up. If I want to dimension from this line to that point, again, the dimension cannot be created. So I'll hit Control Z to undo whatever that did. And now I'll try the dimension again, but this time I'll do it from the front plane to the point. And this gives me the dimension that I want to have. So dimensions and relations in 3D sketches are very different from what you are used to in 2D sketches. The one more thing I want to talk about before we move on is splines. Splines in 2D can be difficult, but splines in 3D are even more difficult. We're going to be working with splines in 3D in order to create tubes or wires. And let's give that a shot right here. The spline tool is on the sketch toolbar by default. And just to start practicing with splines, you can click various control points and the spline has to go through each point that you put down. When you're sketching in 3D, the spline is actually being created either on a selected plane or on a plane parallel to the view. 
when you move the spline points in 3D, you may be getting something other than what you intend. And it's a good idea to rotate that every now and then to see what you're working with and what you're creating. 3D splines are one of the best excuses for using these viewports. I'm going to select each viewport and press the F key for zoom to fit to make sure that SolidWorks is showing me what's going on. Notice that as I move a point around dynamically, the spline is being updated in all the views. This is very handy. Now, I'm going to just delete this practice spline and get down to some sort of a practical application of how to create this spline. I'm going to connect this open endpoint through a couple of control points in space with the endpoint at the origin. To exit the spline, just press the escape key. Now, this spline is by no means a 2D spline. Points are all over the place and I can drag them anywhere. But let's start adding some relationships. So I'll click on the spline here and control select this line and use the make tangent option. Notice what this does to it. This creates a handle and this handle can be shortened or lengthened to increase the stiffness of that tangent relationship. Next, I'm going to come up to this other endpoint, and just to make sure that it's the spline that moves rather than my lines, I'm going to right click on this straight line and use the fix constraint. This over constrains some things, and so I'm going to click on the red along Z and delete that to prevent it from being overdefined. From here, I'm also going to make this spline tangent to the line and Take a look at what that's doing to the rest of the spline. I can adjust the positions of these points. These points can be dimensioned in 3D. They can also be given relations to existing points. So I could take this point and actually drop it onto the virtual sharp created by one of the fillets. I could add or delete constraint points. So what I'll do is hit Control Z a couple of times to get that point off of the virtual sharp and then delete this spline point, which leaves me with just one point controlling the spline other than the endpoints. And now I can also delete that point. Notice that the spline becomes black because there are no other spline points in here controlling it. You can control its shape to some extent with the handles. Or, if you decide you need it, you could add back a spline point. So I can right click and insert spline point. Make sure that the circle with the line through it symbol goes away before you try to place a point along the spline. Now you can grab that point in any other view and change its position. This is often very helpful, and these multiple view displays are extremely useful with 3D sketches. In the next lesson, we're going to try to apply some of these ideas to a practical design problem where we have tubing and electrical wires that need to be run.